Closed captioning is brought to you by ITE Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. The mayor's council meets to discuss their options should the Liberation Casino have to shut down. And by the end of the summer, expect to see a spike in your power bill. And a man who held a dead family hostage for several hours is arraigned in court today. Hoffa and good evening. Imagine the Liberation Carnival happening only three days a week, and we mean only happening during the weekends. That's right, Island Mayors today going over their options should they lose what they keep saying is a key source of funding for the Liberation events. And you guessed it, we're talking about the casino. When it comes to celebrating Guam's liberation, Island Mayors are far from folding. But even if they knock you down, they ain't going to knock you out. And so you're going to come back up and try to bring, because the issue is not about liberation. That is something that people of Guam expect and be. Mm -hmm. And so we're not just going to put our hands up and say, we're not going to do it. Let, let somebody else do it. We're going to have to do it because the law says. Mayor's Council of Guam officers met in Dededo today discussing ongoing concerns with this year's liberation celebration and specifically the casino. Lawmakers are set to talk over Bill 50, which would get rid of the casino at the carnival. The casino had been our uh, backbone to, to finance. However, with the uncertainty whether the money-making facility will remain, the council is ready to do whatever possible to make sure the people celebrate as they have for decades. We're not going to um, disagree with either whatever the legislature comes up with or the governor finally decides, decides to do. And the potential alternatives? Let's shorten everything, yeah. you know, <coughs> even the festivities itself. Maybe we can have the carnival just Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those are options and alternatives you know, that we have to look at. Even at the rate we're going, I think that the safest thing to say is that we won't be able to start till maybe the first week of July. To be clear, these are only possible options if the casino is no more. Mayor's Council President Paul McDonald says he has since spoken with Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio on the issue. Senators are anticipated to discuss Bill 50 during session this week. A nearly $13 increase in the average residential monthly power bill was approved by the Consolidated Commission on Utilities. The hike will go into effect in August if the Public Utilities Commission concurs. Nestor Laconta reports. From 10.5 cents per kilowatt hour to 11.7 cents. The LIAC can be adjusted up, down, or sideways every six months based on the price of fuel oil. In this case, GPA management estimates with a price of a barrel hovering around $50 to $60, it will wind up with an aggregate under recovery of about $15 million. During the last adjustment period in February, it opted to recover 50% of the projected fuel cost, and it recommended doing the same for the August adjustment period. So for the average residential customer who uses 1,000 megawatts, it means a $12.70 rise in your monthly bill. CCU member Judy Guthert says customers who've talked to her are hurting and need to understand that their power bill is subject to fluctuating oil prices beyond GPA's control. But, you know, it's really uh, hard on people. And I think it's very, very important for our agency to carefully explain this <clears throat> to the public. CCU Chairman Joey Duenas breaks it down in terms he thinks people can better relate to. If you look at GPA as an automobile, we control the price of the car we buy, we control the, when we service the car, when we maintain the car, when we buy new tires for the car. What we don't control is the price of the gasoline we put in the car. In other matters, GPA management received approval to begin talks on acquiring a 40-acre parcel controlled by the Ancestral Lands Commission for a new 180-megawatt power plant next to the Northern District Wastewater Treatment Plant. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thanks, Nestor. Well, the Guam Power Authority went before the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission this afternoon seeking a deal to purchase 40 acres of land in Dededo in order to build a new 180-megawatt power plant. 
GPA General Manager John Benaventi. GPA is currently subjected to potentially over 150 million in penalties, so we did not complete this compliance plan submitted to US EPA. We submitted a plan to them in January of, 20, of 2015, which basically said we will build a new power plant, and, in, and what we will do with that is retire the non-compliant CABRS 1 and 2, and also retire CABRS 3 and 4. Now, CABRS 3 and 4, as you know, was the one that had an explosion. Benavetti said the new plan could save the agency money in the long run. The commission is currently reviewing the request. We are less than one month away from hearing the fate of former Guam police officer Mark Torrey Jr. and the ex-cop is continuing his fight to have his conviction thrown out. Earlier this year, Torrey Jr. was found guilty of negligent homicide for the 2015 shooting death of Officer Bert Piello. Supplemental documents were recently filed supporting Torrey Jr.'s motion for judgment of acquittal. The court filings points out a decision in order to dismiss the 2015 indictment against Quadlin Gorang. According to news files, Gorang was indicted in 2015 for manslaughter and negligent homicide in connection to a deadly car accident. The Attorney General's office filed the motion to dismiss that case based on exculpatory information during a, quote, routine and non-substantive interview with a key witness. Court documents state the special allegation attached to the negligent homicide charge in this case must be dismissed. Tory faces a maximum of 28 years in prison. Sentencing is set for June 21st. <laughs> Flexing his arms and using vulgar language right as he walked out. That's the man accused in the April hostage situation and shootout with Guam police. Vincent Philip Sequenza Cruz pleaded not guilty in court today. A superseding indictment handed down this week charges him with home invasion, attempted murder, aggravated assault and terrorizing. Court documents show kidnapping and burglary are now tacked on. Each charge, including a special allegation of possession or use of a deadly weapon in commission of a felony, he is also charged with criminal trespass. He held police at bay for more than five hours after taking a family hostage on Chalin, Atibu, and Dededo last month. Authorities say he was wanted in connection to a robbery investigation. One of the hostages took Cruz down before his arrest. Cruz waived his rights to a speedy trial. A trial setting is set for June 15th at 10 a.m. before Judge Michael Berdalio. The brother of DOC detainee Justin Menno, who was badly beaten inside the prison's max unit, was in court this afternoon. Joshua Menno pleaded not guilty to charges of assault on a peace officer as a, and assault as a misdemeanor. It was earlier this month he allegedly attacked a corrections officer who was trying to stop an argument happening between Menno and another prisoner. The officer was treated for his injuries. Menno waived his right to a speedy trial and will be back in court on June 13th at 3 p.m. Well, a homeless man charged for robbing and stabbing a store clerk in Agate last month pleaded not guilty in Superior Court today. Einstein Warini Jr. is charged with first-degree robbery, aggravated assault, and retail theft. He allegedly stabbed the worker at the A Mart in Agate on April 28th before taking off with stolen items. He was later caught by police. Warini will be back in court on June 13th at 9.30 a.m. before Judge Maria Senzon. An update on a story we brought you earlier this week. Charges against 35-year-old William James Brooks have been dismissed. This after his initial court appearance in front of Magistrate Judge Alberto Tolentino. Last week, while at the National Guard Readiness Center, Brooks encountered a woman known to him. After asking how he was doing, Brooks allegedly stated he was going to, quote, shoot up the place. He has since been released and again, the case dismissed. Well, still to come, DOE investigates a riot and the response from the school resource officer at a local high school. That's story and more when we return. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming, KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Have you gotten paid yet? That's the premium automatic insurance deduction plan from Calvo's Insurance. Paid simplifies your home and auto insurance. No down payment. No more long lines. And you can stretch your payments up to 12 months. Paid is convenient. It deducts from your payroll, your checking account, or your credit card. With Paid, you get up to 65% off your car insurance and enjoy lifestyle club discounts. Life can be easier when you get paid. Call Calvo's Insurance today and save on your home and auto insurance.
your reason to celebrate at IT&E. Pick up the new Samsung Galaxy S8 and get double data. Drive and discover at Guam's best dealership, Cars Plus and Mighty. With Guam's best warranty, there's no better time to drive a Hyundai Accent starting at $11,995 or the Hyundai Elantra starting at $16,995. It's not just newer, it's better. SUV lovers, check out the Hyundai Tucson J.D. Power's top-ranked small SUV starting at $19,995 or save $4,500 and see the advantages that put the Hyundai Santa Fe at the head of its class. Get to Cars Plus today to drive and discover the quality and value that is Hyundai. Cars Plus, driven by you. There is no place on Guam like Chuck E. Cheese's. It's tons of fun with so many games. And parties are a blast. Where everyone has fun. Come and party at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Call and book your party today. Monokai Athletic Club and Manhoban Swim Club present Guam Coco's Crossing 2017 on Sunday, May 28th. Experience the excitement of an ocean swim in the beautiful waters of Coco's Lagoon. Open to swimmers age 9 and up. Choose from four options. A 2.5 mile swim, 5 and 10k races, and a Neptune swim with a mask, snorkel, and fins. Register online at www.guamcocoscrossing.com by May 24th. Supported by these fine sponsors. For more information, go to www.guamcocoscrossing.com. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. The Guam Department of Education is reviewing the use of pepper spray on students following a riot at a local high school. Isa Baza has more. The video has been circulating online. It shows a handful of students rioting and what appears to be a school official responding with the use of pepper spray. According to Deputy Superintendent Chris Anderson, the fight happened at Simon Sanchez High School Monday morning. He confirmed school resource officers used pepper spray against students in the course of the incident in what appears to be an effort to control the situation. Anderson said a total of six students were involved in the riot, and the one SRO seen in the video will be investigated to determine whether an appropriate level of force was used. He added SROs are trained and authorized to use pepper spray if necessary. Part of the training, the judicious use of force, which helps guide them in terms of when uh, they need to elevate the use of force to address a threat. Um, in this particular case, again, it's very difficult just based on the video alone to, to know exactly whether or not uh, the threshold was met to use pepper spray. He said while using any level of force to keep students safe is a last resort, he feels it's important to have trained individuals on campus ready to respond to crises if necessary. As for the students involved in the riot... Definitely um, uh, students will, will face disciplinary action for their behavior. And again, rioting... Uh, on school campus is considered uh, the is categorized as one of the most serious offenses that a student can commit and the first offenses range anywhere from uh, three to ten days of suspension reporting for guam's news network i'm isa baza laws are struggling to keep up with technology facebook snapchat whatsapp or whatever your choice social media abusers are misusing these platforms as presented in day two of the guam coalition against sexual assault and Family Violence 2017, No More to End Sexual Violence Conference. Featured speaker Toby Shulruff is a senior technology safety specialist with the Safety Net Project. She says women are more prone to harassment online, as well as what's become known as revenge porn or the sharing of images or video without a person's consent. You know, we hear a lot of cases where um, an abuser will send those pictures to an employer or to a school to say, oh, you don't want to have person there. Like, you shouldn't respect what they have to say because look what they did in their private life. Um, so it's a, it's a way of isolating the survivor from their community, from employment. Uh, so that's a deeply concerning thing. And when we're talking about adults, images of adults, we don't have a readily available law. It's not like images of minors where that's clearly child pornography. The conference continues tomorrow at the Westin Resort, Guam. It decimates critical programs for Guam and other U.S. territories, some of the words used by Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio to describe President Donald Trump's FY18 budget proposal.
for the Office of Insular Affairs, $3 million is eliminated in discretionary funding for Compact Impact, eight hundred dollars in technical assistance, and 650000 in brown tree snake control programs. As for war claims, Bredalio says she's disappointed that a direct appropriation was not included despite a letter she wrote to the Trump administration requesting one so that it would hold Guam's treasury harmless. What it does include is a $79 million request in mandatory spending for Section 30, which Bredalio says will ensure that survivors receive their claims. The congresswoman says she hopes Governor Eddie Calvo will weigh in with the administration and support her efforts on the matter. Governor DeCalvo quick to respond, saying of course he's going to help salvage the mess with war claims, which he says Bordalio got us into. Calvo adds when the president's team asked how this all started, quote, we will embarrassingly have to admit that our own representative in Congress decided it would somehow be okay for Guam to absolve the federal government of its obligation to paying war claims. And we'll have to come clean about the ruse she and the Obama administration designed to trick Congress into funding war claims by using Section 30 as a placeholder, end quote. Cavo says he would appreciate Bordalio would drop the partisanship so we can do what we do best when we're Team Guam, fix things. He added he's willing to work with her as well as the legislature to fix the mess. Well, the legislature's ethics committee can now confirm it has received and is now looking into a complaint filed against Senator Jim Espaldon. Committee Chair Senator Fernando Estevez saying the complaint was addressed during Tuesday night's closed-door meeting. CNMI Representative Edwin Probst filed the complaint on May 16th concerned about Senator Espadon's connection to a Saipan company accused of fraud. Estevez says the committee has 30 days from the date the complaint was filed to act. Additionally, committee member Senator Will Castro recused himself from the discussion, saying he has a personal relationship with both parties involved. The Ethics Committee also retained Attorney John Bell as its legal counsel. The next meeting has not yet been set. They're the first to provide critical care to patients before they reach the hospital. And as part of Emergency Medical Services Week, the annual EMS conference was held at the Pacific Star Resort today. Acting EMS Administrator Marlene Carbolito and EMS Director Dr. Martin Arasueno said the conference connects EMTs with local physicians. It's important because the EMTs render care in the field and they're alone. They don't have, um, unlike the hospital where we have the physicians and nurses. We talked about certain cases that could be that they did really well on and certain cases that we could also improve upon. Um, but, uh... Some areas covered in depth during the one-day conference included infectious diseases, stroke and spinal trauma. Stroll Guam marks the 703rd local business to take the Hafaday Pledge. Stroll Guam CEO Amit Satdev vowed that his employees will greet customers with a warm Hafaday. Apologize if I butchered that name there, Chris. Satdev. Yeah. Stroll Guam is a transportation network that provides ride services to residents and tourists on island. Customers use the Stroll Guam app to register, to arrange for a ride, and to pay for it as well. And of course, you'll see our crew, our social media crew, taking a stroll on our Facebook page. Check that out now. Chris Barnett is on deck next, but first let's check out weather. My family was tired of seeing red from internet data caps. We switched to GTA and life is good again. Sure, it took a bit of time for some of us to adjust to our newfound internet freedom. Don't turn off the show. How does it end? Relax, honey. The data limits are gone. You can watch the whole show now. But we're all happy with the change, and I think it's even earned me some cool points. You rock, Mom. That's right. It's getting lit up in here. How about that? Uh, okay. So I need to finish this homework now. Okay, I'm done. My son, though, he's in the midst of a serious rebellion. Rebelling against an alien invasion, that is. Oh, yeah. Free yourself. Switch to GTA Home Internet today. Truly unlimited with no data caps or additional usage fees. Ah, graduation day. A time for parents to beam with pride as your youngsters embark on a swell future. 
All but one, that is. You see, Billy thought it would be neat to try Taco Bell's new boldly seasoned naked chicken chips dipped in a sinful side of nacho cheese sauce. By graduating to these crispy triangles of temptation, the only diploma Billy will receive is a master's degree in being hooked. Actually, it's a bachelor's in fine arts, and these things are what awesome. What a waste. Brought to you by the Council for Eating Fried Chicken the same way you always have, and not Taco Bell. Get ready for the most unforgettable music event of the year. The Guam Visitors Bureau is proud to once again bring you the Lote Duty Free Guam Live International Music Festival at the Governor Joseph Flores Memorial Park. On Saturday, June 3rd, Guam Live 2017 will feature acts from across the globe, including Spawn Breeze. Easy. And Anuhea. With performances by Magic, MFBTY, Sammy J, The John Dank Show, David Dior, and Jed. Get your tickets now at all 76 Circle K locations and online at guam-live.com. The Lote Duty Free Guam Live International Music Festival is presented by United Airlines, Docomo Pacific, 76 Circle K, Guam Auto Spot, PIC, the stations of KUAM and Heineken. Brought to you by... With special thanks to... This is a GVB signature event. From the moment you see it, it commands your respect. You can feel its immense power. The only way to master it is to venture inside. Go ahead, dive in. The GMC Sierra. We are professional grade. Get nearly 9,500 total value on select specially equipped 2017 Sierra Crew Cab SLT vehicles in stock. Visit Autospot GMC today. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Hop today, Guam. Chris Barnett with Sports, proudly brought to you by Triple J. Hump Day, Wednesday, Mechalis. You know what I really like? I like wrestling, submission wrestling, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. News from Submit 4 right now. Submit 4, May 27th at the Dusatani Guam Resort. Ten matches on the card for Gi, no Gi, and a combatives matchup with Kenji Okayama representing the Army and Gregory Cruz repping the Air Force. Fighters take to the mat in the blue belt. Open, purple, and brown belt division. Some of the fights to look out for. Drew Palomo taking on J.J. Ambrose. Trevin Jones versus Javier Morellas. Joseph Say Camacho taking on Scotty Eclavea. GBA Basketball League Final Four action. MVP stars of the Mitsubishi Outlanders taken to the court. MVP leading the series 1-0. Outlanders! James Collins, 21 points. Kyle Grimm also with 21 in the game. Turnover here. Pumpkin, J.P. Cruz with the steal. Pass up court to Joe Blas. Blas led all scorers with a game high, 38 points. Stars eliminate the Outlanders, 104-86 to advance to this season's championship series. J.P. Cruz, pew, pew. Five for nine from three-point range, chipping in with 21 points. Wilston at team high, 24 in the loss for the Outlanders. Also moving on to the finals, the KFC Bombers, as the Bombers beat out the Tooth Fairies, 87-72. Raheem Trahan, 25. Billy Belger, 13 in the win. Kirk Long put up a game-high 28 in the loss for the Tooth Fairies. Championship Series tip-off tomorrow night at the OG Calvo Fieldhouse between the MVP Stars and the KFC Bombers at 7 p.m. Game 2 of the Series, Sunday, 4 p.m. at the Fieldhouse. Turning over to powerlifting news. Urgh! Let's meet one of the 671 Barbells competitors representing the island at the 2017 Hawaii Fit Expo. Hafadei Guam, my name is Kayla Anderson and I'm from the village of Jotnia and I'll be representing Guam in the 2017 Hawaii Fit Expo. I decided to do this meet maybe in February and I've always wanted to do a powerlifting meet because we don't have any here. So my raw total for this meet, I'm hoping to do anything over 900 pounds. That would be a personal goal for me. My goals and expectations for this meet would to not disqualify and hopefully get a medal and place for Guam and start the records for Guam. I'm looking forward to sharing the platform with my fellow teammates and just seeing all the other powerlifters out there. 
Highly decorated professional coach and FIFA technical study group member Belinda Wilson of Australia, mate, officially been named technical director of the Guam Football Association and head coach of the Masakata. The Guam women's national team Wilson arrived in Guam May 16th after signing a two-year contract with an option to renew for the positions of GFA. Wilson is saying, I think the overall impression I've gone so far is that everyone is keen and passionate about football and developing the game on the island with a focus on youth development. Outside of Australia, Wilson was formerly women's football coach, education, and development officer for the Asian Football Confederation, the AFC, from 2006 to 2007, before becoming the AFC director of women's football the following year. Wilson continues as both a FIFA and AFC instructor and a FIFA TSG member. All right, welcome aboard. Wilson! My name's Chris. You keep on shining, Guam. Adios! It's Nissan's Stay Fit Sales Event. Fitness is important. You Nissan service pros are like trainers for my car's fitness. Now check out this heart racing deal on the Versa Note starting at 107 per pay period, no money down. Versa Note Family Fund Transportation, 107 per pay period, no money down. Your new car fit kit includes free service, free car washes, and your own personal fitness watch. Keeping it fit and clean with free car washes leaves me more time to focus on keeping myself fit. The Stay Fit Sales Event. Find out more at Nissan Upper Tumon or online at NissanGuam.com. This island we love is where we share our happiest moments. It is where we celebrate each moment and share it with the world. Premier Birthday Club. Wednesday, May 24th birthdays. There we go. First up, Alicia Ray on Cepeda Yanzon. Happy 14th birthday from mom, dad, and sometimes annoying brother. We love you. Jonathan Guerrero, happy birthday, Jonathan, to you. Anthony Mark Carvalito Kenga, happy 7th birthday. And we love you to eternity from daddy, the Kenga, and Solace family. And happy belated birthday to you, Chelsea Corridor, the 20th. Turning 23. Welcome home, missed and love you so much. It's a blessing, love the family. Happy 21st birthday to Craig Matthew Rages, love the family. Happy 16th birthday, Cayetano Blas, I hope I said that right. Yeah. Love the family. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stunk Room Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. Well, that's going to do it for us here on the news desk. Right, Chris? Yes. <laughs> Extra next. watch next. Extra. Yes. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. <laughs> Good night. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion.